All right, in this uh, series of videos, I want to take the program we made earlier, the My Tasks, with the basic GUI, and I want to make an advanced GUI. Okay, so the start code is going to be what we finished off with with the My Tasks. You should have that code. But if not, I'll, I think I'll put a link in the video description so we can start in the same place here. And in here, we had the whole, the GUI was this menu here, right? The toggle, completed, remove tasks, etc. But I think it would be a lot nicer to have the toggle completed would be, well, when you have a task on there, you should have one of those little check boxes. And then there'll be a button that says remove task. Um, and instead of having the, the alert boxes to add something, right, do something, um, we should just have an input element that they type it in and it shows up. So it'll have the, the same kind of functionality, but we're just going to change how we interact with the user and learn some skills along the way. There is some, some interesting things that we can learn about data sets. We'll learn something about that and, and event listeners and different ways to generate HTML. Okay, so that's kind of the, the main focus for this video. So let's start by just doing some changes. I'm going to start in our HTML, I think, and do some changes here. Um, so first up is we're going to get rid of this menu entirely. Boom, boom, boom. And I think the button too. We'll do it so that there's just a big input element, and when they type something in and hit enter, then it'll it'll add the task. Okay, so we'll just get rid of that. Let's just put an input element inside of here, type text, and we'll give this the ID of um, task input. Sure. Okay, so we'll save that. And my computer seems to be lagging a little bit. Why is this so slow? Anyway, and of course, we're going to get some errors now because things don't exist. But anyway, there's our input element. Let's style this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to my style sheet. Task input is the name of that. So we're going to go down here and say task input. And let's give it a width of 100%. Right? So it fills up the whole width. Hold on, let me see. Okay, you know, I'm going to make my page a little bit smaller. Five, oh, and I'm zoomed in here actually too. Okay, my task, advanced GUI, sure. I actually don't think we need that HR anymore. Let's just delete that. Okay, um, and maybe actually maybe above this we should have a paragraph that just says uh, enter a task below. Cool, enter a task below right there. And then inside of here, let's also um, let's increase the font size a little bit. This should be like a, a main feature. I think 16 pixels is the default font size. Maybe we want to get pretty big, 20 pixels. All right, so when I type in there, it's nice and big. And we can even give it some padding, maybe 10 pixel padding. So there's some space around it. Cool. Okay, now one thing that I don't always do, but I think with input elements this does mess it up, is I want to do a uh, box sizing border box. Uh, there we go. Because the, the way the normal setting is that when you give something a width, the width, um, the total width is the, or the width that you specify is just the content, and then the padding and any margins get added to it. Whereas when you do box sizing border box, the width includes the padding. So it kind of calculates that for you. So this is my stuff. And then this we're going to make look different as well. Um, but I'm not going to style that yet. Yeah. Enter a task below um, and hit enter to submit. Ooh. Uh, enter a task below. OK, why am I fo this, this happens all the time. I focus on these little details. Type a task below and hit enter to submit. Beautiful. OK. Um, what's next? Let's, well, let's, let's get the enter, the, that event listening. So there's a lot of stuff here that's going to have to change. Uh, no go button anymore. So no go button event listener. So let's replace that with my task uh, input element. Is assign document get element by ID task input. And again, I always forget this, and it's actually a good practice to see. I call it task input. It's a good idea to copy and paste. You don't actually spell things wrong. And we'll call this task input element. 
And that's what we're going to add our event listener to. Task input element dot add event listener. And we're not looking for the click event here. We're looking for key down. And then we'll have our uh, uh, key down handler. Or let's call it a task a submit handler. All right, so that's that, that's that. Okay, and then we're going to re just rename this task submit handler. And we can get rid of this whole menu. Okay, cool. And because it's a key down event, I'm going to add a, an E parameter so that I can check E.keyCode. Uh, and what's the key code? Is it just enter? We will test that out. I always forget these. Great way to test these out is just go console.log e.keycode, right? And then you can type in your keys and you see what it is. And if it's that, then we'll call the function add task, which will we'll change what that does in a second. Okay, so let's try this. So I type something in, do stuff. See, look at all the keys that are being typed out here. Right, that's D, that's O, that's the space. Oh no, I hate something else. The 32 is the space. Anyway, I'm gonna, oh, sometimes life server <laughs> refreshes. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. Enter is uh, 13, oh, cause I'm doing key code. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think key code is being deprecated. We're supposed to use code now. I think is the newer, newer way to do it. So let's try that again. Uh, do something, enter. Hey, there it is. Okay, enter a new task. Hello. And it adds it. All right. Um, so now, now I have to ask myself the question, do I need to have a separate add task function? Or can my add task just be part of this function here? Right? How modular do I need this? If all the only key event I'm listening for is enter, it's not like I'm doing a big job processing other keys. I have a feeling that I could just do the work right here. Um, I could say, uh, you know, add users, um, or add, add the submitted task right here. And that's simply going to be let task, um, yeah, let, uh, see, the, the naming of these things. Um, let's call it the description. Let description be assigned. Uh, what do I have to do? I have to get the value of this input element. Well, we have that right here, right? The task input element dot value. So that's my description. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to do this code. Paste, tab, tab. Um, I guess I could call this user task. There we go. Let's use a task. So we're going to use our new task function that passes in the user task, which is the value of this input element. Um, and again, this is where what's your preference? Technically, we don't need this variable, do we? We could just throw it into here. But I like separating this. I like get the value and store it in a variable, pass that into this function to get my task object. Right? That's right here. It returns the object with that completed and stuff. This might change too. But for now, let's just do that. Then we save the tasks and we display them. Okay, that should work, I think. And we can get rid of this one now. Okay. So we'll say do something fun. Enter. Yay, there it is. Uh, do something crazy. Enter. There it is. Now, a little annoying that this stays here. Ooh, so we should also do a task input element dot value is assigned the empty string right we can clear it clear it out do something else enter whoops oh because i called it tasks input element try that again do da -da -da. see now it cleared it and i'm ready to type my next thing all right awesome Okay, and, and, you know what, I'm going to pause there. That's a good place to stop, I think. We've got this input element now. We can type it in, enter, it adds the tasks, does things. All right, we will see you in the next video.